Hey guys, Blue Kool Aid here. I'm gonna give you a video. Hey, um, this is some imaging from a tool I don't use very much or show you guys. I look at it very, very often. Um, I'll go more in depth here in a minute. Um, but what this is is this is from Milso over in Hawaii. It's a ground-based observatory. Um, like I said, I'll go a little bit more in depth here in a minute. But first thing I want to talk about is uh, Scott sent this over to me. It's an earthquake we had in Northern California. So 5.6, very, very shallow, um, which is very not not good for whoever's around there. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, we've been seeing an uptick in earthquakes, obviously. I think it's going to continue, probably get stronger. Um, we've been seeing them in rare places, like in France. Um, there was like a 4.1, I believe, or something like that. And then we had one just about eight hours ago in Mexico. It's not a rare place, but... Um, <laughs> it was sizable also. It was a high five, I think. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, um, why is this one in the north, northern California important? Um, well, it plays into the whole story, but it's also close to the Cascadian subduction zone. Um, there's been an earthquake swarm there too of smaller quakes. And that's a, a zone about 200 miles off the coast of Washington, Oregon, and northern California. I think a little bit of southern Canada there. But it's said that when that eventually just slips, um, it's going to generate a tidal wave plus an earthquake. But the tidal wave is probably the worst part of it because it's going to reshape our west coast when it does eventually uh, give way. So <laughs> that's why I'm talking about this. Um, now what's causing these crazy earthquakes in weird places, um, I don't know. Um, I'm not as well versed in this as of a lot of other researchers here on YouTube and other places. Um, I would refer the technical stuff over to Scott, obviously, and because he sent me this stuff. He watches this stuff all the time. He's been doing it for years, just like Dutch Sense and and BP Earth Watch and uh, Ben over at Suspicious Observers. Um, it's becoming more and more accepted that our space weather really affects the earthquakes here on Earth, um, basically our sun. That's where we get most of our space weather from. Um, so, you know, when we do see this, it all relates back to our research here, um, our observations that we make, you know, and again, I can't really go too, too much into technicalities here cause I just, I'm not confident enough to be able to give you guys the correct information. So I would refer you guys over to, you know, Scott's channel and check him out over. I'm sure he's going to do a video on this. Um, but yeah, so yeah, we had that, um, and again, reason why this one's a little bit more important is because it is by that Cascadian sub subduction zone, and I would look for Scott to make a video on this, and probably everybody I just mentioned probably will, along with a lot of other people. Um, it's It does need talked about, so not to mention we had a volcano over um, off of Japan, I think, close to Russia. Um <coughs> It erupted like a day or so ago. But, again, why are we having these? Well, um, Scott pointed out to me via text message that we've been seeing this compression since the 21st. And we have. And so, you know, I start looking at it a little bit more deeper. And I, I'd, I'd been looking at what I'm getting ready to show you before this quake even happened. I didn't know if a quake was going to happen or if this even had anything to do with it. But I do want to show it to you because I think that it could have at least contributed to why we're seeing these things in weird places sometimes. Um, I'm going to show you this short little video here. Um, what I want you guys to watch is, you know, we've got our sun over here, right? So when we get energy here, hits our shield. Sometimes our shields compress like this, okay? Um, but... Well, I was talking about what Scott was saying about we've been compressed is this right here. The, oops. You see how this and this are, you know, the distance here to here is pretty short. Okay, basically we're being squeezed. All right. <laughs> now, what I'm going to show you is that it's actually, some of it is actually directional and it's only happening from one side and it actually travels through so what i'm going to show you you're going to see this line right here go towards the earth 
Okay, and when it does, you're going to see some uh, different colors go through here, which means different intensities. You're going to actually see what looks like to be a, a magnetic wave or disturbance that starts here, goes all, all the way through, and discharges out this way. So what I'm saying is, I don't think it came from the sun. I think it probably came from some other source or what have you. Um, could I tell you what that source is? Absolutely not. I don't know. But I know that a lot of people talk about this because it is, we're seeing a lot of stuff happen on this part, in this direction, okay? And we're not seeing that same action on the top. In other words, it's not symmetrical, which would lend, lend, lend itself to be coming from a different source than the sun, okay? Um, so I'm going to play this, and again, we'll just, uh, it's like a 35-second video, and you'll, you'll see it. Okay, you'll see it compress right here, and then it travels that direction. See that? Okay. Now, I, I was just toggling it back and forth. Now, watch. See that? You can see it wave up, and it go. you can see the energy go right out the top. Now, I can't tell you if this is coming from underneath or if it's just coming from the side, because this is a two-dimensional model. Okay, so I think that this might be contributing to some of these uh, earthquakes. Um, you know, and again, the compression that we've been seeing, like Scott pointed out to me, it's been happening for a couple, couple three days, and <laughs> it's going to continue, I think. I think our solar, we're going to have like some solar winds coming from a coronal hole, which we've already seen some of that already. But when we see these little waves come from this direction, and, and the front of it doesn't really react. So it's probably coming from a different source, in my opinion. So, did that have anything to do with this earthquake? I can't say. I don't know. But, you know, like, again, I would refer you guys over to those guys that I talked about a minute ago. Scott, suspicious, been over at Suspicious Observer. Um, <coughs> again, BP Earthwatch and Dutch Sense, of course. He's probably the biggest name there. But, anyway, check that out. So, back to the point of... Real reason, I'm, I'm at a hotel, by the way, guys. Um, I'm out of town, so I'm sorry if this is kind of choppy. Um, I don't mean it to be. So, this is what we're looking at. This this right here is a observatory um, on the ground in Hawaii. Um, it's ground-based. It's a great telescope. What makes it great is it has, uh, well, a whole lot of things make it great, but this is one aspect of this would be <laughs> the occulter that it uses actually has degrees on it okay you can see that that's different than the sdo right so you can tell very very easily if something's moving um so what i'm showing you guys here right here and all i did was i added a little bit of contrast and some brightness just to bring that out and i'll show you the original here in a minute didn't need much okay but yeah you see these okay so if we know it was there on the first, there's like three objects here. Okay. Again, that one's it's there, but it's faint. Okay. Most people would miss this. Now, something <coughs> else I want to bring here. If you notice the rest of the sun, look, there's nothing there. Not even nothing close to this kind of a thing. All right. It's just not there. So... I do think that these are probably objects. I don't think they're dirt on the lens or a camera anomaly or anything like that. Now, again, I could be wrong. But in my opinion, I don't think so. I think these are probably objects. Okay? Now, what, what I just talked about, about the degrees, it gives us a reference point to see if something moves. So, if this object moves a direction, that means it's probably not dirt on the lens. <laughs> okay? Uh, and most likely, it's probably not any kind of camera anomaly either, because it doesn't move like a like a lens flare would. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, just some sort of crazy camera anomaly is what we're talking about here, but I don't think that is what this is. So I think this is actually a, a legitimate object. Um, <coughs> and again, see see here, see how it moved. Okay, and I'll, I'll put a side-by-side -side up here in a minute. But it, this object here was over here. 
See? And these other objects. So they're moving independent of each other also. So that even lends a little bit more kind of validity to it's not anything other than, you know, it, it's not a camera anomaly or dirt on the lens. Because all three of these are moving at different <coughs> angles or what have you, different speeds. So we talk about us going into a uh, another solar system or another solar system has invaded ours. Um, so we're going to see multiple objects, right? So, I mean, that's probably what we're seeing here. Um, has something to do with that. We've talked about, you know, these three objects or four objects, however many objects you want to throw out there, we've been able to catch two or three at, at the same time multiple times now. Okay, so what I did was I went on back to find out when it wasn't there. And it wasn't there like a month ago. And then it slowly came in. You could see all three of them kind of come into view. And then they started, you know, obviously they kept moving because they're in some sort of an orbit. And <coughs> they're moving. And they're, I think probably they might even, I think they're probably orbiting around each other. They're being influenced by each other as well as the sun here. Okay. That's just my opinion. And again, I'm going to zoom in here real quick. You can see how this has the correct shading also. The sun's a, the light's coming from this direction. Obviously, you see light, the white part of the spherical object here, and it's dark off to the back. So, I mean, that's another point that I have to put out there just to give some more validity to it. Um, <coughs> so, that being said, here you go, Okay. These are the side-by-sides here. Um, you can clearly see, because here's the south. Here's that object. Here's the south. Now it's all the way over here on the right side of the S. Right side of the south marker. This is to the left, and this is to the right. Okay, 19 days apart. So there you go. I mean, it's moving. So are these other objects, if you look at the, the, degree, the degree marks, the, the dots here. Okay, each degree, each dot here is like 10 degrees. Okay, so you got 90, 90 degrees from south to east, and then, not, you know, obviously, it's a full circle of 360. So, <laughs> but I wanted to bring that to you guys, too. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I do think that that needs to be paid attention to. I just put, put a little different filter on that just to kind of bring that out. But, um, yeah, um, I'm going to be doing a live stream tomorrow night with Jeff P. also at 8 o'clock West Coast time. So come check that out. Um, we're going to be talking about quite a few things. Jeff's got a lot of information he wants to try to get out there. And obviously I have uh, some more captures and stuff I want to show. And, you know, I think it'll be a good time and pretty informative if you guys come over and check it out. Um, so, yeah, 8 o'clock West Coast time. Um, <laughs> I'll leave a link. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. If you guys want to get some earthquake information and stuff like that, go over to Scott's channel. Go over to the other other channels I was telling you about. Go check them out. Um, you know, I do have to say thanks to Scott there for sending me that because that you know I wasn't really paying much attention to that today, and I should have been. Um, <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I think Mark Mark Fugel may have done a video on the the earthquake swarm on the Cascadian subduction zone. I haven't had a chance to watch that either. Obviously, guys, I told you I was out of town. We've been at amusement parks and stuff today. So just trying to, you know, take a little time. Um, I just kind of walked around a little bit and let my kids and stuff ride rides and all those kinds of things. But anyway, um, did want to bring that to you guys. And uh, yeah, let's see here. Do I have anything else I want to share with you? right now um that's really kind of crazy important this this is radiation okay um you can go over to iswa and you can get these models obviously this is the earth this is kind of, this is our shield Th these are our radiation levels i guess is the way i understand it um it, this is at the they, they do it by elevation you can look in different elevations but i find it kind of strange that we're all when i've been watching these for a while now and we're now getting the stuff that we're getting comes in from the bottom just like what i showed you a minute ago 
how that energy was coming from the bottom and going out the top, right? So, yeah, um, guys, I mean, that's what that is. <laughs> I know I don't go big deep into conversation there, but you see what I mean by this thing has always been down here lately? I mean, it should be symmetrical. It really should, or close to it. This just makes me think that there might be something, you know, down here causing all this. It wouldn't be that close, I wouldn't think. It's probably further away, but I don't know what's causing it. All I know is it's happening, and the compression Scott was talking about is definitely having an effect on the earthquakes. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, that's what's happening. <laughs> And we are still seeing some of this stuff going on on the core too. Um, yeah, I don't know what to make of that. I really don't. Uh, yeah, so anyway, there it is, guys. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, like I said, I'm in a hotel. I'm tired. been walking around all day. So um, anyway, God bless. Yeshua saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.